Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. In today's episode, I am going to be teaching you how to make a spinach, feta, and parmesan cheese bulema. They are beautiful spirals filled with spinach, feta, and parmesan cheese. They are absolutely delicious and you are going to love them. Today's version is going to be made using homemade dough. These are also called boyos, depending on what region you're from, but my ancestors called them bulemas because they came from Turkey. That's what they used to call them there. So it is delicious and you are going to absolutely love it. So let's get started. For today's recipe, you will need eight cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, three cups of warm water, which you have just slightly warmed in the microwave, half a cup of vegetable oil, plus a few more cups separate, three pounds frozen spinach, thawed with all the water squeezed out of it, four and a half cups of shredded Parmesan cheese, plus another half a cup separate, one and a quarter pounds of crumbled feta cheese, and one egg, which you will beat and add a touch of water to. You will also need a couple of baking sheets, a large bowl, a dough whisk, a whisk or a large fork, a deep tray, some parchment paper, some plastic wrap, dry measuring cups, measuring spoons, and some wet measuring cups. So now that we have all of our ingredients together, let's get started on making our dough. The first thing we're going to want to do is add our eight cups of flour to our bowl. Once we've added our flour, we will grab our sugar and sprinkle that in, and then we will grab our salt and we will do the same. Then, incorporate them all together. Just give it a nice mix. Now, warm your water up in the microwave, just warm to the touch, and pour it into your dry ingredients. Then, mix it in and try to bring the ingredients together. The idea is to bring all of the ingredients together. We want our dry ingredients to absorb all of our water. So just turn your bowl as you need to and just go ahead and incorporate all of the ingredients. Just mix them up until you see them starting to come together. Little by little, the flour is going to be absorbing all of your liquid. Now, continue to do so until you feel that you've brought them all together and kind of formed a shaggy dough. Once you get to this point, just clean off your dough whisk and then grab your oil and you're going to pour your oil in. Now, once you've poured your oil in, you are going to switch to using your hands. Put your hands in and just knead your dough until you bring it all together to form a wet and sticky but cohesive ball of dough. It will be sticky. Don't be tempted to add any extra flour in. Now, once your dough has come together, then we are going to cover it up. Make sure you cover it well because you don't want the air drying your dough out. So cover it real well. Now, once you have covered it well, we are going to set a 60 minute timer because we want to let our dough rest before we move on to the next step. So now that 60 minutes have passed, we are ready to portion off our dough. The first thing you wanna do is grab your oil. We are gonna pour a couple of cups of oil into our tray because we want there to be enough oil to cover our pieces of dough. Our dough is going to live in this oil overnight and it's important that it be nicely covered in oil. So now we are going to start dividing our dough. We are going to grab pieces of dough that are about the size 
of a nice sized lemon just kind of make them into rough balls and then put them into that tray with oil the goal is to form 20 different balls because we are going to be forming 20 bulemas so at this point you want to make sure that all of your dill balls are covered in oil just go around and kind of make sure they're all fitting and they all are covered in oil real well it doesn't matter if they touch each other the oil will help them not stick together and even if they do you can just slightly pull them apart so now go ahead and cover them with plastic wrap and then once you seal them real well with plastic wrap we are going to grab our tray and we are going to place it in our refrigerator that is where the tray will spend the night we will see them again in the morning this is also a good time to pull out your spinach maybe leave it in the sink and let it thaw overnight so here we are the next day. We have let our spinach thaw and we have squeezed out all of the water from it and we've added it to a bowl. Now we're going to use our hands and we're going to break the spinach apart because since we pressed it so tightly, it kind of clumps up together. So we're going to just loosen up our spinach so that it's not as clumped up. So now in a separate bowl, I crumbled up my block of feta. I like to buy my feta in a block because I find that I get a better quality cheese. But if you buy crumbled feta, that's fine too. If you haven't bought it crumbled, then break it up and just kind of make it into crumbles yourself. So now you're going to measure out four and a half cups of Parmesan cheese. I am using a combination of the grated type and the shredded type but it doesn't matter which type of Parmesan you use. You could even grate some yourself from a block of Parmesan. You can use a combination of them or pretty much any type of Parmesan cheese you'd like. So once you've measured that out, we are going to grab our bowl of spinach and then to that bowl, we are going to add our crumbled feta, all of it. And then we are going to add those four and a half cups that we measured out of our Parmesan cheese. Now once they're in, you're going to use your hands and you're just going to combine all of those ingredients. You are going to just put your hands in all the way to the bottom and just kind of bring the spinach over and you're going to use your hands to gently combine the ingredients. What you're trying to do is you're going to try to form a nice mixture of the three ingredients so that they are well incorporated. So once you have incorporated all of your cheese with your spinach, you're going to grab a baking tray and you're going to line it with parchment paper and then spray it with nonstick cooking spray. Repeat the same process on a second tray with parchment paper because you will be making 20 bulemas and you need some room between them as they bake. They will definitely need the space. So now you are going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees to get it ready. So now is where the fun part starts and where the magic happens. Grab your tray of dough balls from your refrigerator and put it on your counter. Carefully remove the plastic wrap and discard. It'll be very oily, so be careful. Now, you're going to grab your first ball of dough to form your first bulema. If the ball has stuck a little to another one, don't worry at all, just kind of pull it apart. Now grab your dough ball and put it directly onto your work area. Using the palm of your hand, you are going to stretch the ball out very gently. The idea is to pull the dough apart as far as it will allow you to. Just gently use your hands. You can turn it over. Just kind of spread it in different directions as you go because you're going to try to make the dough as thin as you possibly can. Now, if it tears, don't worry. Just kind of pinch it back together because the dough is very forgiving. And as you roll it, a little tear here and there, no one is going to notice. Continue to pull your dough out as far as you're able to. The idea is to get your dough as thin as you can. So once you've done so, 
it is now going to be time to start filling our bulema. In order to fill our bulema, we are going to be grabbing some of our spinach and cheese filling, and we are going to be setting it directly on top of the dough. Now here we go. Your dough is ready, it's nice and thin, and we are going to start grabbing some filling. Use your hand and just grab a nice pinch of filling, and towards the bottom third of the dough, the side that's closest to you, you're going to just make a single row of filling, making sure to get plenty of spinach and yummy cheese. Now once you've made a straight line of spinach filling, we are going to start rolling our dough. So the process of folding a bulema is pretty simple. You're going to grab the end that's closest to you and you're going to fold it up. Notice there's a little tear, but that's not going to matter. You're going to fold it over onto itself. Now you're going to grab that row and you're just going to turn it and fold it over. And then you're going to bring the ends in on both sides. And then you're just going to continue the process of folding it over and just completely folding the dough over on to itself. And then bring it closer to you and we're going to make a spiral. You're just going to turn one end in and then you're going to just bring your dough around and create a spiral. And then you're going to tuck the end that you just brought in under to kind of hold it into place. You're going to continue this process over and over and you're going to form 20 bulemas, but don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do it one more time so that you make sure to understand clearly what to do. So grab your piece of dough, press it down with your hand, spread it out as far as you can. So you're going to grab some of your spinach and cheese mixture and you're going to form a line on the third of the dough that's closest to you. And you're going to make a line of plenty of spinach and cheese so that your bulema is nicely filled. And then you're going to pull the bottom of the dough up over the spinach. And then you just kind of fold your ends in and then continue folding up that row of spinach, the dough, you're folding it onto itself over and over to form a rope. See how I kind of pull it towards me as I do so? That helps thin the dough out. Now bring it closer to you and grab one end, either end, up or down, and then just form a spiral. And then you're going to grab the end and you're going to tuck it under to keep it from opening up. And then you're just going to place it right on your tray. Then you're just going to repeat this process over and over until you have formed all 20 bulemas. So if it's taking you a bit to form your bulemas, or if your oven isn't hot yet, cover them with plastic wrap to keep them from drying out. So now that you have formed all 20 bulemas, they are ready for the next step. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to beat an egg in a bowl and just add a touch of water to it. Then we are going to use that egg to give each of our bulemas a nice egg wash. So now that they have each received an egg wash, we are going to grab the half a cup of Parmesan cheese that we left separate, and we are going to sprinkle each one of them with some Parmesan cheese. This will help them get a little more color and just that little kick of extra flavor. So now your bulemas are ready to be put into the oven. Set a 45 minute timer. 
Bake your bulimas at 350 degrees until beautifully golden. After 45 minutes have passed, pull your bulimas out and let them cool. They are smelling incredible. They are golden and yummy and incredibly delicious. Don't bite into them just yet. They are super hot. Let them cool down a bit before you indulge. Now that your bulimas have cooled, they are ready to be enjoyed. They are absolutely gorgeous. Everyone is going to love them. Let's cut into one to show you just how delicious they look on the inside. They are filled with spinach and cheese. They have these delicious pockets of flavor running all the way through. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. So if you had any filling left over, do not despair. The filling can go in the fridge. You can put it in a Ziploc bag or a bowl and keep it there to just use in your omelets or pretty much anything. Or you can add a couple eggs to it and put it in a Pyrex and stick it in the oven and bake it off. And it makes a beautiful spinach and feta and Parmesan souffle, which is absolutely delicious. So nothing goes to waste. Now, how delicious does that look? Mm. So how fun was that? These are absolutely incredible. The entire house smells incredible. Everyone is gonna be rushing over to the kitchen to wanna try these. They are absolutely delicious. You are going to love them. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like, comment, and share. And of course, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on so many upcoming recipes I have planned for you including how to make a bulema using a traditional phyllo dough. That one's coming up soon. So keep watching and I'll see you next time. Sally that girl in the kitchen.